One, two, one, two. You know how we do with your boy BQ. Welcome to a special weekend edition of the B Side Podcast talking Impact Wrestling at the Impact Lounge YouTube channel and Impact Lounge podcast streaming platforms. So, crazy thing is, I actually recorded this podcast about an hour or two before they released the information about Sue Young. So, now I'm finding myself here redoing it because I got to change some of the content. So I'm going to put a question out to you guys. So if you're listening to this podcast at the Impact Lounge on YouTube, you can engage with this. Um, Does Impact Wrestling need more knockouts? Now, here's the thing. The obvious answer is yes. I'm no dummy. The obvious answer is yes. But in the comments, I really want you to talk about the state of the knockouts division and even some women you think would be good fits. Now don't, you know, I'm a part of a few AEW groups on YouTube and they're very, um, very much like the WWE or NXT audience to where they're like, Oh, what would you think of man, man Fulton and AEW? You know what I'm saying? Like people who are under contract, don't let's, let's be realistic in the comments of some of the women out there that we think, we would like to see. So at the end of this podcast, I'm going to give you a handful of women that I think would be good additions to the knockouts division. But what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to talk about, you know, briefly about each individual knockout, you know, there's their current status with the company, whether it be off screen or on screen. And, uh, this, the, the current state of the knockouts division for me reminds me of a time in 2015 to when we had a knockouts division that this was right when awesome Kong left and you're looking at the division and you've got four girls, I believe who didn't wrestle taking up, you know, uh, eight for the, whatever was eight roster spots. You had Maria Canellas Bennett who didn't really wrestle. Uh, she, yes, I think she wrestled three matches total in impact You had Rosemary, who at the time didn't wrestle for a while. You remember she was strictly a valet to the decay. She didn't wrestle. Then you had Allie, who didn't wrestle for a really long time. And then to a lesser extent, you had Raquel. You know, they had her going out there with the bromans, and she didn't wrestle. I think she did the knockouts knockdown, and she maybe wrestled once on impact. But you had four girls right there who didn't wrestle at all. And then you have, and back then you had like Madison Rain and uh, Velvet Sky for a little bit. And then uh, the dollhouse, you had Marty Bell, Jade, and uh, and Rebel. So you kind of have factions there. So you, and there's Gail Kim, of course, and maybe there's one or two other girls. But yeah, Sienna started coming aboard. But it was pretty difficult to book that division because the same girls were kind of forced to wrestle or they just didn't have matches on the card. This reminds me of that time a little bit because we have several women in the knockouts roster who are non-contributors at this point for, for whatever reason. Now the difference was, you know, back then with, you know, these are the waning days of TNA. They weren't, um, they weren't necessarily putting that many matches on TV. And then you even had, you know, uh, the global force era where you, you bring in about three girls who, who don't get on screen at all, (laughs) you know, but I'm starting to relive these times a little bit and I'm going to get into some reasons why. Um, but what I was just saying previous to that is that with this, you know, current state of impact there, the women are wrestling a lot. It's just that we're getting the same matches. So I'm going to go over these knockouts real quick. And this is, I guess, an alphabetical order by first name on the impact wrestling website. You're going to see what I'm, I'm talking about exactly. So number one, Alicia Edwards, my favorite knockout. 
uh, I will say that she probably had the worst 2019 of anybody on the roster. No wins, uh, no momentum in the ring. She started the year as Eddie Edwards' wife and ended the year as Eddie Edwards' wife. Now, what do I mean by that? Clearly, she's his spouse. But the storylines, whether it was Moose, Ace Austin, and then you go back to when she joined the company, Davey Richards, it's always been centered around being his wife. And they haven't been able to find anything for her to do otherwise. So, And she's been around. She's one of the most longest tenured uh, members of the company. I would say she's fourth behind Eddie, Rosemary, and Moose. So she's been around a long time. No clue what to do with her. Jessica Havoc. I actually thought, uh, based on last week's episode of Impact, that they were going to go a, a route with her real similar to Susie, to where she was Jessica or whatever. When they were when, when Sue Young was getting ready to put her in a coffin, that's where I thought they were going with it. Now her run's been pretty dominant for the most part, and uh, they killed off James Mitchell. So, you know, obviously that was for on off screen stuff. Not sure the direction they're going with her, but I would have to believe that she's on the short list to actually be the next knockouts champion. But uh, it'll be between her and someone else on this list. But there's there's only a couple challengers right now. Next one's Jordan Grace. She is the knockouts champion. I was pretty confident that she was going to be the one to take it off Taya Valkyrie, and she did. But because the the knockouts roster was so shallow, you know, you could kind of see it a mile away because she had multiple opportunities and, you know, the storyline was, oh, well, she would have beat her if ODB wasn't there or whatever, you know. But we pretty much knew she was going to be the next knockouts champion. And right now she's the face of the division. Katie Forbes, I was really happy when they signed Katie Forbes. She had one match so far, and it was against Jordan Grace, and she looked really good in it. Katie can go, and I, you know, Katie is also with Women of Wrestling, and I think she does a great job on that show. Her gimmick is toned down <laughs> from what it is right now, more of a PG gimmick. But she can go. And I brought up Alicia earlier. Alicia came out at Bash of the Brewery, too, and um, had beef with Katie, and they, you know, they pretty much teased RVD and Katie going at it with Alicia and Eddie. And I I could buy that. I think that would work. I know we're going to go right back to Alicia being Eddie's wife, that whole thing, but that could work. I I would, I would like that. It would be very, I think they could have some similarities to when similarities to when Davey and Angelina were around. But anyway, Katie is pretty much Rob Van Dam's valet. She's not wrestling at all. Not at all. Not on the impact plus shows. Nothing. And I think she plays her role really well as far as what she does, but she's not wrestling. So she's, you know, much like Alicia, not a contributor to the knockouts division right now. Then you've got Kiera Hogan, who is, uh, without looking at the entire roster right now, I would say the, the biggest homegrown star that they've, the most successful homegrown star, I'll say, that they've put together. You know, when they signed her, Really didn't think it was going to go anywhere, but she is. Uh, she's been on fire ever since, and turning her heel was was excellent. Now they're kind of teasing a little dissension between her and Madison, which there's always been a de- degree of dissension there. I know they kind of teamed them together, but the problem is when you start teaming everyone together, it takes away from the diversity. You know, instead of. Jordan and Grace wrestling Madison Rain. She would have to wrestle Madison and Kira. You, you know what I mean? Instead of just Jordan and Grace wrestling Madison one week and then Kira the next week and kind of spreading things out. Once you start teaming all these women together, it it it's just not as diverse. But she's she's clearly a challenger for the knockouts title. Now, Jordan and Grace has more challengers than Taya had. We'll we'll put that out there by far. Really, Ty's only challenger was Jordan Grace. They teased something with Rosemary for a real, or I mean, God, forever, and that turned into nothing. But Kiera is someone who has a lot of potential, and, you know, to be, it seems like they're branching her out on her own now a little bit. Madison Rain, you know, she's that 
veteran, and she's she's um, probably the biggest part of the knockouts division right now because the storyline that she has going with the Madison Rain Golden opportunity, and then she's kind of doing like a gut check thing. I mean, it's not totally clear, but this is right now the most important thing going on in the division because I have to believe they're going to be introducing a, a new knockout through this, you know, like a, like a major signing, you know, she's going to be probably challenging Jordan Grace with a couple of, you know, jab- jabron females, um, you know, cause at first she was the, the open challenge was against her. So th- I think this is one of the better parts of impact right now. And I think there's a really a, a strong possibility. She could be the next, the next knockouts champion, because what I found really weird was was that Jordan pretty much offered her an opportunity and she didn't want to take it. Then you've got Rosemary, who is arg- arguably the most popular, probably person on the roster. But, you know, we know that she injured herself probably a good year and a half, two years ago, it feels like. She got injured. She didn't injure herself. She got injured in a match with Havoc at AAW. And she really hasn't been herself since. You know, she's been working hard to get back into shape, back in a ring condition. And she has, has been wrestling a little bit. But a majority of what they're doing is storyline with her. They're keeping her around, keeping her relevant, you know. But it's it's storyline. And then when she wrestles, she doesn't win. And, you know, the matches aren't all that long. She never gets a match on a pay-per-view, which is crazy I shouldn't say never but it's it's pretty rare if you look back at it so you got someone who should be the face of the division and th- the fact that she's a one time knockouts champion is mind blowing she really needs to get another run um, we don't know what's going on backstage with her but right now she's a non-contributor because everything is very storyline driven Sue Young slash Susie slash free agent. So it was announced that Sue Young's a free agent. She announced it herself that her contract came to an end. But for what it's worth, she's at the current set of tapings in Atlanta. Could it be to write her off? Could it be, uh, you know, she's just working without a contract right now per match or per appearance basis and they're negotiating? Who knows? Because it feels like she's mid-storyline right now. And if she were to depart, I think it would be a really big slap in the face to the fans because they've been doing this Susie thing for months. This is the longest thing going. She's been feuding with Havoc for a long time. Uh, you know, they had that probably close to a year. They had the match at Slammiversary, you know, the four-way, but she's pretty much been feuding with Havoc ever since Havoc came back to the company and I hopefully even if she's gone we're going to get some kind of payoff here but you know it kind of reminds me of Scarlet Bordeaux where you put us through all this crap with Scarlet for like a year only for her to be gone you know so hopefully she resigns you know obviously Rich Swan's with the company maybe she takes a break because Rich Swan's unable to wrestle who knows but it's hard to believe that when you got one guy who's out of action right now and can't wrestle, uh, that the wife is going to stop working. <laughs> you know, you feel me? So we're going to see what, where that goes. But if we were getting a Sue Young slash Susie character going back and forth, that would be really entertaining. Then we got Ty Valkyrie, you know, longest reigning knockouts champion. And the crazy thing is she drops the title and doesn't appear to want it back. (laughs) I'm sure at some point she's going to have a rematch for the title. But uh, the reason I thought she was going to be gone is because once you drop the title after that long, after that long, what do you, what's next for you? What could you possibly do? So she challenges Tessa unsuccessfully, which I think was really good because she has beaten Tessa. So why not go for the world title when you, when you've previously beat her, beaten her. I mean, I think that's great. I think that's common sense storytelling. 
But if you remember, this was really under the radar. Tessa wrestled in an intergender match in Mexico. I think she teamed up with Ace Austin, and they took on Trey and and uh, Tessa Blanchard. And it was an intergender match. It wasn't a mixed tag match. So now that she's challenged Tessa, is she going to be the next one to do intergender stuff? That's that's what I I'm really interested to see. It doesn't seem like she's really going for that knockouts championship right now. So currently as things sit, she's not really a contributor to the division. We've got two more here, folks, and then I'm gonna get into some names that I think would be good additions. To Neil Dashwood. Now, we've talked about it a lot. And she's been a di- disappointment in the division. She hasn't really had any good matches. They try to push her really quickly based on name value. And this was their biggest you know, signing in the knockouts division in a while. I was pumped. I was jazzed. I was, I've, I've always been a really big fan of hers. She's been super underwhelming in impact. And you know, I even did an upload on the YouTube channel where I was like, hey, abort mission, pull the plug, turn her heel. Now in Atlanta, we know she's coming back and she's wrestling uh, Taya Valkyrie. So it seems like that's a baby face match. But if you look at the, I don't know if, I don't know if we'll call it vignettes, video packages that they're putting out for, they're kind of presenting Tennille as the, the, you know, the sexy model that if you look at her Instagram, I mean, it only makes sense. You've got this Instagram that's delivered a certain way. And then you present her on television, totally different. I think there's a disconnect there. I think they're going to try to blend the two together. You know, it only makes sense. So I'm happy she's coming back, but I want her to, I I hope that she is in, in better shape, uh, better ring shape and can put on some better matches because she, after she challenged for the knockouts championship, I think later she might've been in a, a three-way match or something like that. And she felt like the third wheel in that match. I don't remember who was in his, t- it was Jordan Grace and, and someone else, but she felt like the third wheel in it. So now we've lost all steam with the character. So that's that's what I think they're doing. I think they're going to try to bridge the gap between Tennille Dashwood on TV and Tennille Dashwood, the Instagram influencer. So last one, we're going to talk about Tessa Blanchard. Clearly, she is the Impact World's Champion, has not wrestled in the knockouts division itself in quite some time. I think she wrestled at an Impact Plus show. She teamed with Jordan Grace against Madison and Kira. And I'll say that I really enjoy that match because it was refreshing to see her wrestle the chicks again. And then clearly she wrestled Taya and she had a mixed tag match. And I think they're doing a good job presenting her. Her the, the build last year of Tessa was made me nauseous. But I think since she's been the champion, I think she's been they, they've delivered her a lot better. They've presented her a lot better. And they booked her well. But she's clearly not a knockout at this point. So with that being said, you have Tessa. You have Alicia. You have Rosemary who are, and you can even maybe throw a tie in there, but we're going to say Alicia, Rosemary, and Tessa, who are non complete non-contributors to the division. And then you got Sue Young, who's, we don't know what's going on with her. And Katie Forbes, that's the other one. She's a non-contributor to the division. And I'm talking about from a wrestling standpoint. I'm counting here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 knockouts. And you've got like five or six who can contribute in the ring. So clearly they need to add some kind of firepower here soon. Now, who are those names? Who are some people that I think would be really good additions? Um, one of my top ones was Priscilla Kelly, but you know, she's doing a little bit of AEW work. Her husband's there. And considering she doesn't seem to like Tessa very much, I don't think that's going to happen. And that's the underlying thing in all this. When Tessa came, you real, you, you remember Sienna took off uh, Laurel Van Ness, who was a knockouts champion, she took off. And this was all around the time they were like negotiating with her and everything. So clearly, it seems like that's going to be an issue. You know, who likes her and who doesn't like her. 
But, um, you know, Priscilla Kelly's probably a no go. Kelly Klein is the top of my list. That's the one who can, who can f- step in and take the Tessa role and, and, you know, take the Rosemary role and the Tyre role. Like she can, as the big, as a big name who can work, she's perfect. And she would have been perfect to fix the AEW women's division, but because she had a divorce and it was public and it was ugly and her husband works there, I don't think that's going to happen. So I really think she's going to be a knockout. I hope that this Madison Rain thing leads to her challenging uh, Jordan Grace at the pay-per-view. That's where I hope it's going. But if they were to add her, to me, she's the biggest possible free agent name for the females. Lufisto's another one. If you're going to bring in guys like Larry D who are, you know, a, a veteran, a good hand that has been paying their dues on the indies, you you can do something like that with the knockout division. And she's in incredible shape right now. Um, I've seen a lot of her work in, in shine previously when I was watching shine more than I am now. And she, she can go, there's some similarities with Jordan Grace, depending on how you look at it. But she's in really good shape, has really overcome some odd health issue. Uh, I mean, health wise. And she's publicly said she would like to join Division. And at this point, if someone really, really wants to come to Impact, you probably need to look at that because they have a history of signing people who are just there for a paycheck. Alexi Nicole, uh, I, I think, she, you know. A lot of the reason they couldn't get Alicia Edwards off the ground is because they didn't really have like a jobber in the division. And not saying Alexia Nicole would be that jobber, but I think she can take losses. Yeah, uh, she's more than earned her spot in the division. And they just keep bringing her for the Windsor tapings and everything. And to me, that's like disrespectful. Maybe they don't see it that way. Maybe you don't see it that way. I think it's really disrespectful to you know workers like her, Aiden Prince, that. You know, hey, we're going to bring you on for the show, but we're not going to make you a part of the roster. I mean, you can give him a per appearance contract and put him on the freaking roster. You know what I mean? It, it, for, cosmetically, even if they only work in Windsor. But she's she's more than earned an opportunity to be a knockout. They've had her do backstage segments. She was on that silly parody show. I mean, come on. Giselle Shaw is another one who is, she's a star. She's a future star. She is amazing in the ring i think she had a match on impact plus with scarlet bordeaux and they you know jobbed her out to scarlet but she's got a finisher that is bonkers and she's done really good work on women of wrestling she's got a great look this is another one who who could be a major player in the knockouts division not just uh you know playing the background like she can she could be a major player AQA is another one, you know, we saw her at the Arlington Brawl and she's done, you know, I think a Twitch show in the past too. And, you know, I had said something on Twitter, you know, it shows her in the ring and some of the moves she can do. And I'm like, if someone is doing moves like that in an, in an impact wrestling ring, why are they not on the roster? That's craziness. What they would do with her creatively, I don't really know. But from a talent standpoint, because you have to start bringing in talent because AEW's division is so bad, but they're the hot thing going on right now. They're going to start trying to sign women. And Impact has to jump on this right now and improve this division. But AQA is another one. I think they should bring back Diamante. She has looked good and, you know, she did a match on AEW Dark. She's done women of wrestling with Kira Hogan as a tag team partner. I believe they're the tag team champions. She's looking good, and I feel like they never really gave her an opportunity again once she got healthy. I know a couple times she gets in a ring and she gets hurt, but I think she deserves an opportunity to come back. Casey Spinelli is another one where, much like Alexi Nicole, she paid her dues. She did everything that Impact asked of her, and they didn't bring her aboard. And she's got the charisma. She's got the potential to be a steady hand in the ring. She can probably take losses. But that's someone who I really think, you know, they, they should have signed a long time ago. I think Eva Lee would be an excellent addition. And I know that there's, you know, there's rumors about her character. But there's also rumors about Tessa Blanchard's character. And, you know, they made it work. And Eva Lee had interest in coming to Impact. And they weren't interested. 
especially when they partnered with the ground, like she wanted in and they didn't do that. She's one of the best women wrestlers, I think out right now. Um, and she, the, the people love her. So if you can work around Tessa Blanchard and those issues, I think you can give Ivelisse another shot. And then of course goes without saying, uh, Kaylee Ray, Kylie Ray, what the hell's her name? She would be an excellent addition too. Now I've seen her wrestle live a few times in Chicago and she's pretty good in the ring, but two things I want to say about her because she's the person who left AEW. Her buzz got massive and people started following her who didn't really care before. And her name got really big because of that. So her name value on the indies is really strong right now. I mean, she's had, she's the few shows she's done. She's late, you know, um, because she stopped wrestling for a while. She was headline, the headliner of the show. And then on top of that, at Bound for Glory, if you were there, she got the biggest pop of the night when she came out. And she went out there and she went at it with the dudes. The place went crazy for her. Um, from what I'm understanding, she's in talks right now. Uh, so stay tuned for you know, future episodes of Impact and everything. But her name value is so strong right now, and it would be in their best interest to jump on that. So that's it for me, folks. That's it for the B-side. If you're listening on YouTube, would love to see your thoughts and ideas in the description. And if you're, if you're a first-timer, make sure you hit that subscribe button. But for now, I am BQ, and I'm out. Peace.